Welcome back, Femme Fam. We have another amazing guest for you today. We promised you a guest after last episode. <laughs> yeah, because I know you guys hate listening to me and Tessa. <laughs> no, but today was like, this episode is amazing. And it's probably going to be a little longer than most of our episodes. But like, I mean, it's not like Joe Rogan four hours, I promise. We but promise. it is like so full of so much good stuff. Like we get raw, we get vulnerable, we get real, you guys. <laughs> I, I loved it. I think you guys are really going to love it. So yeah. we had. <laughs> so we had Sam Valentine, who is the host of One Broke Actress po- Podcast. Um, she's an actress from all over the Midwest. She moved all around. But when she moved out here, she's been on several national commercials, voiceover, TV roles, and feature films. So she's done a lot of different things. Got started in the podcasting world to basically do what we're doing. Like, share stuff with you guys that we wish we would have known before. That we wish we would have even known to ask before, you know, and she brings on a ton of great guests from other actors to casting directors to like all kinds of stuff. And yeah, we talk about like balance and how to friggin' like survive in this industry. <laughs> yeah, we we get real, real and raw. And that's because she was doing podcasting back before podcasting was cool. Yeah. And she really, she just let, that conversation flow with us. So yeah, we get real, we get raw about the realistic expectations one sets for themselves up in the industry. And if you're not an actor tuning into this, cause you know, we have the filmmaker fam here. I still think it is all so relatable and yeah. even the career mindset is so relatable. And I think we both get really honest and open with the different jobs we've had and why that's maybe worked out better in our favor at different times in our lives. And that's, yeah. that's a, a wonderful thing that, you know, you just have to keep checking in with yourself. And, um, at the very end, um, she has launched an amazing, uh, class program that she granted us. We didn't know, but she <laughs> threw in a femme 10% discount off of her yeah. new class. So, so make sure you listen to the end because you will actually get a reward. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> see? It pays off to listen to all the shit we have to say. <laughs> Why are we like this? <laughs> anyway, guys, like I said, we get real real today. So anyway, without further ado, <laughs> Sam Valentine. Yeah, I signed with some new agents uh, in January, actually, oh, when everything yes. was, thank you, when yeah. everything was really, really bad. Yeah. Uh, I signed with a new agent, which was crazy. I was like, are they even going to take meetings? There's, right. you know, there was, uh, people were dying like every eight minutes in yeah. LA. It was just so scary. It, yeah. And the fact that I had a, a career victory during that time is something I will never ever forget that was really special yeah that's amazing well I'm happy to hear that you know you had a good start to this year and I think Mm -hmm. I feel like collectively as creatives like we haven't been doing bad like a lot of people and not you know everyone's had their own journey through it but the people we've had on the show like they've really hustled I mean I think that's what goes to say about independent filmmaking you just kind of make the best out of the worst and and even as artists and actresses you know we just have to like stay stay focused and and use those opportunities because I think a lot of people did dip out or move away or mm-hmm. like you know relocate and had to probably change management like you probably came in mm-hmm. even though it was a scary time you you really like you made it work so that's that's amazing to hear yeah because I know for like Carolina and I it was just like because we normally work full-time like day jobs separate from all of this so it was we actually had time to work on all this stuff that's always like you know when we get home from the mm-hmm. job at nine o'clock at night or when we have to get up before the job at 7 a.m to do you know so yes. for us it was kind of a blessing as isn't it isn't it exceptional what happens when you really put your full energy in towards something like I've yeah. I've been doing one broke actress on and off for four to five years mm-hmm. And it all of a sudden in the past year became much more of what I wanted it to be. And I'm getting a lot more traction and things are happening with it. But that's only because I was at home every single day and I couldn't go babysit five or six days a week. And I couldn't fill my schedule with other things. And it got so much of my attention that whether or not I would have like changed things or did something new, I think it was bound to be 
something new and good. And I could not have done that without the pause that we took. And, you know, I don't ever want to make small the amount of loss and grief that we went through, but at the same time, creatives, a lot of people found a mojo they didn't know they had, yeah. which is so tight. <laughs> I love that. They found a mojo they didn't know they had. I love that like yeah. way of putting it. Yeah, for yeah, sure. We're, survi- we're survivors, man. We really yeah. are. I mean, yeah. you have to be in this kind of like industry. I mean, whether you're an actor, you're creating your own films, like whatever it is, any career in the arts, like you have mm-hmm. to be resilient. You have to be able to handle failure you have to be able to handle droughts when there's no work and like all of that you know all the no's and to get to that yes (laughs) and I love that you said that you know to having that pause and and then really reflect on what which channels of your art too that you want to pursue and and thank god for podcasting like we started our show too before the pandemic and it's just yeah, like all the wonderful connections we were able to continue to grow through the pandemic when it was a really lonely time, I think for many and going through it and feel, especially as artists too, it's like a lot of us had to put pause on our jobs as mm-hmm. theater kids, the, as everyone. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I think it was with all the difficult things that we were going through, it was such a blessing. Like we've said it on other people's shows too. Like it really was a blessing for us, a saving grace. <laughs> Even when we yeah. didn't want to record, like that, of course, yeah. there were days yeah. where like Tess and I were like, fuck, like I haven't slept all night. Like I'm just stressed. And we're just like texting is. each other the skull emoji. <laughs> oh yes, just straight <laughs> skull. And then Tess is just like, drink water, you dehydrated bitch. My favorite line that she always says. It's so important. It's yeah. so important. There, you know, I gotta say though, in comparison to because I've uh, the podcast has been going on for a long time for me, and I had another podcast before One Broke Actress. Mm. Uh, because I just I love I love a podcast and love them. I always have. And uh there was something really miraculous that happened though, when I had to stop picking up my house to have a podcast, because like, I, I always had people come over Mm -hmm. or I went to a place called second home. That's like a co-working space. When I worked with Laurel Canyon creative, they helped provide that space. Um, so I was always, uh, getting ready and trying to put myself together. And I was like schlepping (laughs) four microphones and a, and a, you know, connector and my computer and all this stuff before I would run over to UCB to take class. And, um, you know, back in the day when we did all these things in one day, uh, but (laughs) before when I had them in my house, like I would get so stressed because I had like really cool, really, really cool people coming over to sit in my kitchen. Yeah. And, you know, and I was like, well, the bathroom's got to be clean. What if, what if they need to use the bathroom? So I clean the guest bathroom and then, well, they, they need like the water. So like, let's make sure I have like a really clean water glass. Like I would just get so concerned about so many things that didn't have to do with the podcast. Mm-hmm. Right. So when it, when it got to the point where the great equalizer happened and we could all just sit in front of our computers <laughs> and talk to each other. Yeah. And we were all like, everybody has shit behind them. Everybody is just getting by with the headphones they have. And it was just so free to just figure it out and just record. And, and I don't, it just, it's made me a lot more excited about the days that I'm like, cause it's, I think people don't realize how much energy this takes Mm -hmm. to stay engaged with someone for an hour with your phone off without clicking around. Like it's, it's a lot. I think that's what made it kind of a nice, let's call it a therapeutic therapy session with our guests, Mm -hmm. because when we were like, okay, we're like so tired. We have, to, yes, you have to bring the energy on, you know, your guest feeds off of that. But in a way that forced us to put on a happy face, even if we weren't feeling it completely on the inside and then be completely yeah. present with the wonderful many guests we had on the show. Shout out to everyone. We love you. We always <laughs> shout them out. Um, and then to sit with someone like you, I, I want to take it back because yeah, you hopped on podcasting before it really, really blew up. I think anyone who before did it, it was cool. Before it was thanks. cool. Like we thanks. were I've been saying right. this for years. So thank you for saying it. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, because this was like right, like for us, we were right on the brink when it kind of blew up. But yet to take us back like four or five years ago, you said you love podcasting and what about it really drew what was it? What was the motivation behind it? Because again, yeah, it's there's a lot of work behind yeah. something like this. Well, I'll say I didn't know how much work there was. And I thought this can't be that hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
because I listen. Theoretically, and, you know, it doesn't sound that hard, and it is. Yeah, theoretically, no. I'm like, you just record it and you pop it in places. And then as opposed to uh, that was that was like five years ago. That was when self tapes were like not super common, but they were starting to happen. And I was like, in comparison to this work, recording something is so easy. I don't have to put on makeup. I don't have to get ready. This is so like, I could totally do this. So my friend, Scott Flannery and I, he was a contestant on The Amazing Race. And <laughs> nice. um, we were like, we both liked podcasts. I like to listen to how people talk. Mm -hmm. I think when they're answering interview questions, you can hear a lot in vocal tone and inflection, what they really think about things, even without seeing their face. Yeah. Um, and I was, you know, the first few podcasts I listened to were probably not that great. It was a lot of, you know, early on, a lot of people got podcasts just so they could drink wine and talk to their friends and call it a job, you know, um, which is still something people will do and mad respect. I used to every once in a while, Scott and I would do it. And then I would listen back and I was like, this podcast sucks. Um, but, uh, but so he and I both loved them and he had just gotten back from filming the amazing race. And we were like, what a fun thing. If we just talk about our day-to-day -day lives, it was just a chat podcast. It's mm -hmm. called not according to plan. It still exists. Like it's still which I don't know how, because I stopped paying for that hosting platform a long time ago. Uh, but it's still out there. And he actually won the Amazing Race, oh, which wow. I didn't know while we were recording. Um, he didn't tell anyone. He really stuck to that NDA and, uh, and he yeah. won. Yeah. And so that was super fun. So the podcast had a like fun little moment in time. It had a little pop. Uh, and then he moved to Seattle. So when he moved, I had already started One Broke Actress mm -hmm. and it was just a blog. And I thought, well, I really love podcasting. And I think that this is something I want to do. I was interviewing actors and just writing out, transcribing the things that they were telling me. And I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> it would take me so long. I'm not a good typer. If you've seen my Instagram, I always spell things wrong. <laughs> I, uh, so I was like, this is, this is cool. This is what I'm going to, I'm going to take this to a podcast instead. And it just bloomed from there. And I didn't listen to any other actor podcasts. I don't even know. I don't know when like the big ones started. I don't know when Alicia Oxy started hers. I don't know when Audrey Moore started hers. Um, but I really stayed in my lane because I was so nervous that if I listened to other people's content, I would copy it. Um, so I tried very hard to just do what I was doing. And then after a couple of seasons, I started to listen to other people's and I thought, oh, this is so great. And mm -hmm. we're all so different. And mm -hmm. you can say that about any podcast, right? It's kind of Absolutely. like casting a show. Yeah. All of these people are qualified to be auditioning for this. And they're all really fantastic. They're just all delivering it in a different package. And it's like, which package do you want to handle today? Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of where it is today. And it's really become something that has has kept me alive in the business. There's been times where I've wanted to, to really take a break or to let go in different capacities. And I'm mm -hmm. sure you guys have all felt that in sure. every creative endeavor. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I made up my own posting podcasting schedule where I was like, if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. And I would record 12 episodes over a period of time, release them one by one, and then take as long of a break as I needed to until I missed it. We've yeah. done that and too for our own sanity. Like when it's you're nice, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I mean, there's no rules to podcasting. No, like no. there's no people are like, how long is the season? And I'm like, how many do you want to have? Exactly. Like, nobody cares. Nobody's going to fault you. <laughs> I just, I'm like, but keep it if you want, but keep, be consistent. Yes. Um, and, and be conscious of what you're producing. I think that's the two most important things, uh, especially when you're starting out and consistency doesn't mean every day or every week for a year. It means like assigning yourself a time period and sticking mm -hmm. to that. It's just so fun to have a reason to talk to new people mm -hmm. that I would never, maybe not have the chance to talk to, or people I already know that I get to ask them cooler questions, right? Like really think about it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. That's the most rewarding thing. We've said mm -hmm. it on other shows too. It really is that it's just getting a moment with you, someone we like, you know, got to find and connect with. And I've tuned into your show. It's amazing. Congrats. And I do, I have some follow-up questions, um, kind of hitting the stuff we're already talking about here, but that it, yeah, Tessa and I 
uh, the, that's the coolest thing is to yeah. to connect with our guests and because we've have, met people yeah. like just just by them being a guest on the show you know we like we found them on Instagram or whatever and we're like oh we should bring them on as a guest and they're like genuine friends of ours now you know like we would go like hang out and have a drink with them or whatever like it's just it's been so cool and it's you know it's people also that we've met and had on the show that we want to work with in the future you know so it's right. it's great it's the networking least and everything. awkward way to network yeah <laughs> let's just say it <laughs> totally because you're not really it's it's magical when you don't ask of other people right right all you're asking for is their time and yeah. I think this is something that especially actors because this is that's my main mode of communication is talking to actors we miss out on is because in networking we go in looking for someone to give something to us mm -hmm. instead of looking to connect and also can I provide something to you like right. I'm providing you with a PR or a great hour of your life or a reason to talk about yourself you know like it's just there's no transactional like feeling I at least for me when I do podcasts now granted yeah. I don't do them about uh, you know, you watch like the Dak Shepherds and things like that. And they often have guests who come on and uh, are promoting something. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and ask to come on because they have a show coming out. And I'm like, I don't really do that because yeah. I want to talk to you as you, not you as the person who's pushing something. Mm -hmm. I don't always want to record people on their highs. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to me because I think that's a lot of times what we get. Yeah. of working actors and celebrities and people in creative spaces is when something's going well. Absolutely. And I want to get, I want to yeah. get those other times because mm -hmm. they are usually much longer than the shorter yeah, times. Yeah, that's very true. And they're usually more interesting, honestly, because most of us listening aren't super successful, you know, so we mm -hmm. want to hear that like struggle that other people had to go through too, because we want to relate to that. And it's like, you know, if they are at a mm -hmm. high, there's, they can still talk about the struggle getting there, but yeah, if they're like still fighting to get there and they're working on something to get there, that's like the most interesting time when it's like they've got that motivation, that determination, but they're not quite there yet. Also, though, if even if they they did just land something, I think that we've found and what we've been really picky about on our show are the people that aren't celebrities, but are really working and and just landing maybe their first feature film or their first project. And so yeah. they're at a high, but you get to really, all the struggles are so fresh that it's, it's really so inspiring to, and, and something and relatable. Yeah. It's been, it's been great because they are like just getting started, getting their first bit of successes where you get to hear all the fresh, like struggles <laughs> of filmmaking yes. and acting and stuff. Yeah, well, they still know they still know what it was like to work a side job and then go home and work on their project. Like that's that is the sweet exactly, spot. Exactly, yeah. girl, which <laughs> I wanted to real. And that's what I wanted to talk about with you, Sam, because you on your show, um, the episode I've tuned into especially talk about having a job and I think and and still or a side hustle. And I think that looks different for everyone, like for even me and Tessa, that looks so mm -hmm. different. And I think as an artist, a creative, and I feel like this is why it, this is a topic that can really translate to everyone in the film industry, because no matter what department you're on, like, you know, writing isn't something that you can easily make money off of full time, but there are steps to get there, right? That's an example. Um, so talk to us like how that has worked out for you professionally to then transition to are you acting full-time now like talk to us about that because I think it's really scary sometimes to for artists to um feel like they can't they have to be doing something maybe full-time to then be making it quote unquote so <laughs> I have very strong opinions on this yes <laughs> spill the tea <laughs> spill it girl so that's that is literally just horseshit because the most successful people in the world are never doing one thing. Mm -hmm. You can hearken it back to some older actors. Sure. Does Meryl Streep do one thing and do it well? Sure. Yes. She's from a different era. I think now to be actively successful in this business, you have to have, well, first of all, to be successful as a person, the average millionaire has seven streams of income. So why wouldn't you 
do other things? Why yeah. wouldn't you, even if it's like you're doing things on Instagram, like the people who are like getting brand deals and things like that, it is a hustle. Like that mm-hmm. is a, that is a side job. That is totally a thing. Like making your own content is a like hustle. If you're also auditioning for other people's work, I think the industry is not reliable to be a full-time job. I think that some people, some actors are no longer, <clears throat> sorry, yeah. some actors are no longer working uh, other side jobs, but that doesn't mean they're just waiting for people to pick up the phone. Yeah. Uh, I, I really encourage, especially new actors, and I'm doing a whole workshop in June about this, but uh, to, instead of spending their time, spinning their wheels and working countless jobs for $20 an hour to spend some time getting really good at some skills that they also enjoy, be it production, be it editing. Um, I, for example, I got into podcast producing, um, all of these things just became a part of my world. And now I can do them on my own time to support my career. And I don't need to work 50 hours a week anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that has actually not made me less of an actor. It's made me a more effective actor because I can use my time in a more focused way. I'm not stressed about cash flow all the time. Uh, and I have things to rely on when it's quiet. So I don't feel thirsty, right. desperate for someone else's acceptance of my role, because if you got the audition, <clears throat> you have a chance at the role, mm-hmm. but you have to be accepted by someone else and fit their exact vision. And the likelihood and the control you have over that is so very, very small that you got to fill your time with more stuff that makes you happy. And if it can also make you money, then fuck yeah, like let's go. And I just think, I wish someone would have told me that I could also make good money at something that's not acting and still be a qualified working actor at the same time. Yeah. It has changed my whole view. It's changed how I show up in auditions. Uh, it, it's my, everything I do is more powerful because I feel powerful because I don't feel like, you know, the, the random nanny who also is an actor, quote unquote, they just feel, which is, there's no, there's no hate to that job. That job supplied me with income for years, Yeah, but it didn't make me happy yeah. and it didn't make me very much money. And I think you can do other things. Sure. Every once in a while, they're going to take you out. They're going to take you away. Like you might have to go to a business meeting. Now you can work full-time jobs if you want to and still audition because yeah. everything is self-tape. And I don't think that's going to change for a long time. Agreed. I, I think you have so much flexibility and so much mobility as an actor right now that if you're not working on a, a skill or developing a business or working for someone that you believe in, mm-hmm. then you're you're missing opportunities to be a full-fledged person. Yeah, I'm so yeah. glad you said that because I also had that same struggle. Like when I first started, at, when I first moved out here and started like on-camera acting, I was like, how, you know, what, when can I call myself a working, a working actor, a professional actor, you know? And at first it was, well, when I don't need a day job anymore. And then it was like, well, okay, maybe it doesn't matter about the day job, but at least when I'm making money acting. And now I'm like, honestly, if you are actively auditioning, that's the only thing you can control anyway. So that makes you a working actor. Yes. Yeah. Because how much money too, right? Like the amount of money you needed in 2017, the amount of money you need in 2020 or the amount of money you need to like save for your future in 2030. Like uh, enough money is very relative to me. (laughs) I I want to make a ton of money because I want to give to more people and I want to start an actor scholarship one day. And I want to, I have big plans for making big money. So it only behooves me to help others more if Mm. I'm making a lot of it. So If also, I do think it's great to work in the service industry. I think my time as a bartender, as a hostess, as a waitress, as a retail employee, I literally worked every single job, (laughs) helped make me who I am. And I, they're part of my story and I love those jobs. And I've met the coolest people at so many of them, Mm -hmm. but I could have spent a lot less time at all of those jobs in the long run. I think that's been the situation for me. Like I lost my full-time job in 2020 and mm. it was it was something that supported me financially for five years. And um, I started in the service industry, but then I moved into 
um, interior designing customer service showroom sales gal extraordinaire. It was cool, but then it was also like, it's not, I'm not building myself though. At the end of the day, it goes back to corporate money, corporate, like, and I'm still just getting like pennies of what, you know, someone else is getting. And and so it wasn't enough for me to feel like I was investing in a future for myself. I still felt like this golden handcuff situation where it's just enough, but it's not enough though. Like I'm still like just scraping by and the hours, like you said, it's like 45, like minimum a week and Mm -hmm. then producing on top of that. And then trying to act, I was getting like really sad at times. Like I I don't want to say depressed, but kind of like no, that, that happened to me in 2019. I was working five jobs and still barely cutting even at the end of my months. And I was literally just so sad. All I wanted was a vacation, but I couldn't even afford one. <laughs> it's, just, it's devastating too. Cause when you did get in an audition, you probably didn't feel like you could put your whole heart into it because you had like uh, an employer that had your to day. worry about yeah. like, cause I had yeah. to hide it. I always tell actors, they're like, should I tell my new employees I'm an actor? And I'm like, yeah, lead with that. And then be the best employee at your job and then they're going to give you the most flexibility like yeah. be a really good employee and then ask for that I hate that they didn't like that for you I know and, and so you're I not love doing that, that anymore, right? no I'm not and I'm, okay. I'm like honestly that's it was like a hard but a almost like I wasn't too mad or sad about it <laughs> when it happened because mm-hmm. even the way she dismissed me I was just like bizarre <laughs> she had like another <laughs> manager in on the call like didn't thank me for the years uh, that I'd put in the business I brought in and then I had like was really mm-hmm. telling my clients finding me on LinkedIn or Instagram being like where did you go like what like this happened I don't want to work with them anymore <laughs> I'm like yeah. okay thank you thank you I feel because it was sad that's what hurt me was like the that she didn't even appreciate me and anyone listening like if they don't yeah support you as a person like you said you they don't care about who you are what you're passionate about then you're just a number you're just someone bringing in money which I get that for sorry for especially corporate jobs that's just how it is but my employer before her was a different story. She would be like, hey, if you're up filming all night, I don't care if you have to come in at like 10 the next day for that one day. Like, I'd rather you do your thing because she she appreciates that my hustle, like I hustled for them. I brought in a lot of money. I brought in a lot of clients. And I, I was just like, wow, that's what hurt the most is like she didn't even thank me for like the years I put in, which is kind of like awkward. Like, yeah, so we're, you're, your position's eliminated, so bad. That's what's important too. And it's like, we don't always have this luxury, but if you do, you know, is to find jobs that have those people that you're working for, people that get you're an actor, people that get you need that flexibility, people that, you know, that get what you do because- like for mm-hmm. instance, so I, I'm in the service industry, I work in catering. So I work for multiple companies and certain ones are, yeah, you are just a number. You are just there. If you can't work and you can't find somebody to cover you, you're done. And I know that that's that mentality. And so I work for them less, you know, versus the other mm-hmm. companies that it's like, they get what I do. I've become friends with my bosses there and they are understandable and flexible with that. So I work harder for them. I take more gigs from them, you know, and it's, you know, it's a give and take, but yeah, if you are able to find a day job with somebody that understands, like cling to that. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's totally. Yeah. Tot- and I, and I don't want to put down to like, sometimes you are just in a number. Some people like to go to work, work their shift, go home, clock the fuck out. And mm-hmm. that's no longer something I do because, because of the work I do, I'm working a lot differently. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know, it's at home. I can access my computer at any time. Uh, but I also think if you're going to work those jobs, if you're going to just be a number, be a cog and like get your money and go complete respect. Also, like I should say, I'm speaking from privilege. I am a middle-class white, thin, attractive female. So I have a different like theory on jobs because of the privilege I've had in my life. Mm -hmm. It's important for me to say that. Uh, Also though, I think you can still work those jobs and still have a long game of something else you want to do on the side because we forget this career is so long. And I was so stuck in the beginning of it that I need to book jobs now, but I wasn't thinking about building a career. I was just thinking about booking jobs. Mm -hmm. And when I try to come into a room and be exactly the breakdown, 
they're never going to cast me for other things because they don't think of me as Sam Valentine. They think of the actor who tried to book that role and didn't get it. You know, it was, and, and I'm making some generalizations here, but I needed to like show up as myself mm -hmm. and do the best I could with the materials I was provided and worry about the long game of a career. And there's so much more to a career in acting than just booking the next job. There's so much more to it. Yeah. And having an out of, of some kind that is uh, something you're in control of, like taking control of your finances as an eventual goal, starting your own Something. side hustle, you know, working your Instagram, being a TikTok person, like they're not, they're never going to make you less of an actor. And I think they'll, in fact, like give you a longer career reach. I'm so focused on my career for the next 10 years right now. And yeah. I'm, I'm yes. about to turn 33. And like, by the time I'm 43, I think I can be a lot different places than I am right now, but I am going to be completely in control of my finances. And that is just so Mm, mm. It feels so good, you guys. <laughs> yeah. And see, guys, it can be done. Yeah, that has literally Probably. been the mental switch for myself, too. I'm like, I'm in it for like the next 10 years. I know where I want to grow mm -hmm. and build. And I don't regret working those five years then because I didn't. Well, to be honest, when you get right after school, too, like you're figuring how being an adult is like and what is yeah. it that you mm -hmm. really want to do. So it gave me that security. But now I'm like, OK, I don't want to just clock in and clock out anymore. And that's yeah. like I love that you brought that distinction because that's what I was doing. And that was fine. And yeah, it was semi enjoyable. Like it was it served a purpose at the time you were doing it. And like for anyone listening, I think that's something where you can, if you're not happy, like think about it, like that wasn't a waste of time. Think about the skills you got. It was creative, mm -hmm. customer service, project management, and think about how you can transition that to something else that maybe will be more fulfilling. And that's what I've been doing. And totally. it's still a fucking journey. She's still unemployed. It's it's been really hard, but uh, I <laughs> unemployment shit has just been such a train wreck. Also, actors, you can have unemployment. No one told me this. Mm -hmm. I oh, didn't really? understand how unemployment worked. Mm. I highly suggest that people like it's it's a big thing. I'm also encouraging people to understand the system mm -hmm. because I know people who have been unemployed and been on unemployment between several jobs mm -hmm. and they get by and it's like this is secret money i didn't know you could have <laughs> yeah yeah oh hello there i didn't see you come in i'm shane o'hare of the geekscape games podcast the number one video game podcast on the geekscape Dot Network. Join myself, Derek Krenevelt, and a guest every fortnight as we discuss video game news, video game reviews, and dissections. That's Geekscape Games every two weeks on Geekscape.net. I taught myself so many things off of YouTube. Like oh, we love YouTube College. <laughs> Google College, YouTube College. Yeah. We are here for it. We've learned everything. There's certain things I'm like, there's certain things I'm like, do, do that. like an actor was like, should I only, sh can I learn acting through YouTube? I was like, you can learn skills on YouTube, but you have to put them into play. Right. So that's the big difference. But other than that, I feel like in terms of like learning to use, I just got this like gimbal thing for my iPhone to make more video content. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, certain things like using GarageBand to edit podcasts. I've never used it before. I always use different podcast editors. Yeah. Like I love to get on there and learn and it's like, it's free. And now oh, I yeah. have that on my skill set. It's so bomb. There's like, there's something for everyone to learn. I love, I love that we're talking about this too. <laughs> no, it's so great. Yeah. And by the way, the tests are like, they're technical, but they're not. They just want to know how you work as a producer or as a content mm. creator. Like what are the steps because yeah. they can see, like, do you really know what you're talking about? Or like, you know, yeah, they, they're just assessing your workflow. So for the most part, mm -hmm. that's what it is. But you, it's very detailed. And like, that's part of a producer gig. But yeah, like I've, I YouTube stuff all the time. Even like I'm learning more about Facebook marketing. Even <laughs> I'm taking mm -hmm. like LinkedIn learning pay. If you're looking for a job right now too, get that added 
bonus. It's like, it's expensive. It's like $30 a month, but I'm able to take courses while I'm applying for jobs. So I'm killing, yeah, like I'm doing two things at once. So there's like so much out there online. That's so yeah. amazing. But the free yeah. resource, oh, we are here for it. I like, <laughs> that's how I learned video editing, <laughs> like from yeah. nothing. I didn't go to school for it. Dustin didn't, yeah. we didn't go to school for any of this. We just, we've taught ourselves. At the end of the day, it's all a lot of work, whether you are acting, mm -hmm. podcasting, doing your day job, like it's all a lot of work to be in the arts and to have that like gig lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. so, but if you love it, you're going to be willing to put that time in, you know, if you love it and you want to learn, you're going to be willing to take those, you know, maybe hours watching YouTube videos to learn whatever, mm -hmm. maybe days, like <laughs> it depends <laughs> how, you know, how intense it is, but you know, and that's the thing. It's like, if you, if you don't love it, don't do it. Like don't start a career in the arts if you don't absolutely love it, because it is going to be a lot of work. It is going to be a lot of time. And if you aren't in love with it, why waste your time? You know? Yeah. I think I mean, the hardest part about this job in the whole thing, at least to me, is doing, working on your career when there's no career to be had. Mm -hmm. I think practicing self tapes, working on auditions, you know, or whatever, when you have none yeah. <laughs> yeah, is the hardest thing in the world because it feels so fucking pointless. Yeah, It really does. It feels like such a waste of time. I'm like, why am I going to learn this role? Like, this is like a five line co-star. Like, I'm not even going to go out for this. Like it's five lines. Like it's like, whatever, but it just sets you up to become the person you want to become. Like I've been really intentional this year about making my life fit the mold of what it would look like if I was going to set every single day. And like, I've Love designed that. my morning. I like the way I like how I, I don't really drink a ton anymore. Cause I like to go to bed and get good rest. And like these simple steps that I've kind of put into place to design a life that I think will be easy for when I'm working are, are already starting to pay off. Mm -hmm. And I wake up every day and I'm like, I am a working actor. My whole schedule is built around being a working actor. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do a lot of acting stuff today. I'm going to edit a bunch of people's podcasts, but <laughs> that's how I make my money to yeah. be a working actor. It just, yeah. I feel like when I started to make those moves and I wake up every day building the life that I wanted to build mm -hmm. with before I get somebody else's permission to live it, it is setting me off in a very different vibration yeah. than I've ever been at before. And I'm not super woo. I'm not like a crystal girl, but I just think that when you're vibing in a different place, you attract such different energy. And it's not even like necessarily like a universal rule of attraction so much as that like you just show up fucking cool and people want to be around <laughs> yeah. fucking cool people. And when you're cool, yeah. people want to hang out with you and that attracts other cool. And then they want to have you on set because you make their life easier. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you laid it out perfectly. Cause I think a lot of people are like manifestation, hippie shit. Like, but it like, just look at it. However you need to look at it, whether you mm -hmm. are on the woo woo side, whether you don't believe in any of that, like just putting the energy out there and like, you know, making it works the way you want it to eventually work. That's, that's all you need to do. And it's going to work. It might take yeah. time. It might not be exactly how you plan that it's going to work, but it's going to happen. Now, keep in mind, it took me 10 years to get yeah. the confidence to do like May 22nd is my 10 year anniversary of being in Los Angeles. I'm throwing myself a party of one. I'm <laughs> buying myself a bottle of champagne. Yes. But I, I, it took me this long to realize, oh, I will, if nothing, if my acting career like showed up one day in my life and was like, hey, listen, <laughs> we got a job for you in 12 years. It's going to be the job of a lifetime. <laughs> we just need you to show up every day until we hit that 12 year mark and we're going to give it to you. And it's going to be the everything you ever dreamed of. I'm on board. Yeah. I just have to know that that is real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And that's what you have to like, kind of tell yourself like, yeah, and, yeah. and no, like, you know, like, in the next, and to, I want to circle back to your 10 years, girl, because I'm excited for you. Yay. That's really exciting. I love, I just love that mindset. I'm obsessed with it. It's the long run. It's not the, we talk about on our show too a lot. It's just, it's just like, you can't, you can't short term success. It, it just, it that's short term then. Like we're here mm -hmm. for the long haul. But I think that, yeah, putting your, your thoughts out there and, um, I was going to say something else. And now I just like 
my brain. Oh, I hate when I that, that I have like <laughs> 10 different things pop up because what you said a lot of, you hit a lot of points where it just, the, the idea of knowing that there's something in the future, you, you do have to like kind of make yourself believe that. But yeah, actors are all like a tablespoon delusional. <laughs> we yeah. have to be. We have, we to, have be to do to this be job to survive. <laughs> because yeah. you're gonna have a lot of people tell you, "Well, like, did you book anything? Did you like? What have I seen? What have on? I seen? I get that all every time I come home, and I yeah. hate hate coming home for that reason because I get the same people giving me that same. So why have you been on? Where have I mm-hmm. seen you? And they don't understand really podcasting or like the yeah. other victories that I'm having in my life that I am so happy about. And yeah, they just, I can't, I can't express that. So I'm just like, this is just going to be a pointless conversation. And I just <laughs> don't, I want it to be over. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Listen, I wrote an article a while ago called Things to Stop Saying to Actors. And if you want, I'll send it to you and you can send it to all your family and friends Yes, because it's written (laughs) to them, not to other actors. And I think it was exponentially helpful. And I'm going to, my mom doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to sneak my podcast equipment. I'm going home next week to visit my parents. Uh I'm going to sneak all my podcast equipment home and I'm going to make her record a podcast with me because my parents have shifted to understanding this business and being so supportive, even though they really don't get it at all Mm -hmm. but I I need to figure out what it was that they did Mm -hmm. in their mindset toward me so I can share it with other actors so they can share it with their parents yeah I love so I'll I'll uh I'm gonna I'm gonna figure this out I'm gonna gonna, she's gonna hate it she's like attention but (laughs) I love that idea though yeah that's great that and that's the one blessing though my mom she is just a doll she listens to every episode she takes notes and she's so cute love you Sophia shout out oh hi Sophia you're a good mom she (laughs) is so precious and I say that because that has now like help she's always been supportive but now she gets why I'm doing this or that and and like she still might not comprehend it at all because you know there's a lot (laughs) to it Mm -hmm. but it totally helps her understand what Tessa and I are building in our journey and like you know what what the heck it is that we're doing (laughs) and so for all those people and I think that's something you have your show like those people who are asking the questions be like, well, have you tuned into my podcast? Because I literally lay it all out there. <laughs> like mm-hmm. what what I've been right. up to, what it is that I'm dealing with. And so it's kind of hard for me to have this conversation with you because it's just, you're, it's not going to make sense. It won't. Yeah. yeah. I can't, you can't, you can't sound bite that very well. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. You can't. <laughs> so I think that's been, honestly, that's also been really helpful having a podcast is to mm-hmm. kind of like share that to everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but, I think in addition to like, even just for yourself, let alone f- explaining it to other people, like in addition to realizing it's a long game, so you yeah. can't, you know, be down on yourself for not accomplishing what you want quickly enough, but you have to also celebrate what you do accomplish because I think we're all just so like focused on the next thing that we don't take time to celebrate what we already have done. And like, that's been a big mindset shift for me. And like now, whenever Mm. I meet people that are out here, so like they, even if they're not really in the industry, they kind of at least get it because they're around it and whatever. Um, And they'll ask, you know what I do? And I'm an actor. Usually I'm like, on a catering job and it's a client that I'm talking to about this or something too, you know? It always is. Yeah, it's always exactly. there's someone above you in the workplace and you're exactly. like, I really want to have this conversation right now. <laughs> right. But, I'll, you know, I'll say I'm an actor. And so, again, because they're a little more familiar, they won't say, oh, what have I seen you in? But they'll ask, mm-hmm. oh, well, how's it going? And I think I used to feel like, oh, you know, if they saw my resume, they'd be like, this girl hasn't done shit, you know? But... I stop now and think about like all the things Carolina and I have accomplished and, you know, even just the shorts we've made, the podcast that we have now with this great following, the fact that I am auditioning a lot, even if I'm only booking a small portion of that, you know, so I tell them, hey, I've still got this day job, but it's actually going really well because I'm keeping really busy and I'm getting to do what I love. That's what I tell people now, you know, so... Yes. That's the best answer. When people, when you say you're an actor and people say, how is it going? I'm like, really freaking great, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, and that's when then they'll say like, oh, did you just book something? And I'm like, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
no because it's not that's it's not. to me is like the that's the short that's the Everest right but mm-hmm. I'm training every day to climb it so yeah yes that I is so cool that. Tessa what was it that made you change your mental shift like that was it you know to to hold your space as an actor I think I mean, a lot of other people kind of giving me that advice and hearing it over and over and seeing it like work for other people and allow them to be a lot more like happy and confident in themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think I just had a point in my life where I became more confident in myself as a person in a lot of ways. So that definitely helped too. But I think it was just, you know, it was getting to a point of almost depression over like feeling that I hadn't accomplished anything and I was so far behind and just, I don't know what how I really forced myself to do that, but I could see that that was where my mind needed to be. So working towards that. And then, yeah, it just, it paid off immensely because I feel way better about my career now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cause to, I mean, you can compare and despair yourself into like a full hole if you wanted to. Absolutely. Like it's, Cause you're like, Oh my God, everyone, everyone on Netflix is 22 and way more successful than I am. <laughs> right. I don't, you can't, it's like, it's useless information, right? To process. Like, it's just useless. I think that's so cool that you did that. Good for you. Thank you. And yeah, it's, it takes work. Like anybody Mm -hmm. listening that's like, well, how do I get there? There's no, there's no secret. (laughs) Just really, it takes work. It takes working on yourself and, you know, I mean, again, it's kind of like you could get real woo woo with it, (laughs) but you Mm -hmm. don't have to, you know, it's just, yeah, it's mindset. It's psychology. It's science, you know, it's Yeah. Well, being yourself I think, to like, a certain way. completely candid yeah. here, I love that we, you know, you guys mentioned it's it's not a woo-woo thing. It's really, like, a self seeing how I'm checking in with yourself. And, like, I know, like, I'm starting off this week I because I have I just came home from a funeral and, like, a lot of Ugh, stuff. I'm sorry. It's, like, so hard. But I just feel it inside me that I'm just not happy at this moment. And I know. Mm-hmm that I just need to transition those feelings because if I get stuck in the negative and the, and and the anxiety of it all, I'm not going to get better. Like I'm not going to continue because I've noticed in the past year of like the ups and downs that we've had, I've had some amazing opportunities. I never thought I would have got like would have had getting to act in something amazing that I loved and, and the projects that Tessa and I are doing are so exciting, but I know if I don't fix what's happening inside, like right now, and like sometimes you just have to deal with your shit, guys. Like you just mm-hmm. do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know I need it. I need to change that energy shift real quick because I just feel like depleted. I just feel like I'm not mm-hmm. attracting stuff because I'm just feeling like really anxious inside or whatever it is. So that's like I think so important. It's not the woo-woo, like, oh, I just need to like put a good vibe out there. Yeah, but that's that comes from within and the being like at peace. Like yes, so whatever yeah. it is you gotta do to be at peace is so important for me. It's just like sometimes I just need to like step away. Like Tess and I started this episode where like a lot of people are trying like we're in LA. Like people always want your energy and your time and to contact you, but mm-hmm. sometimes you just have to tell them, No, thank you. Like I just mm-hmm. can't right now. I have to, I have to deal with myself because then I'll be in a better place to hang out. I'll be in a better place for us to, you know, grab coffee or make that meeting happen, you know? So that's, that's what I have to say to that. Yeah. (laughs) But like, look at how, this is what I love about creative people though, is that you just were so vulnerable, like in front of your computer screen in a room of people. (laughs) Like I have watched actors on sets and on shows and movies. We've all seen them and they just faked everything you just felt. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important to acknowledge like that is so huge and it doesn't have have to feel good all the time. And like, I'm so sorry that you have to feel these feelings. It fucking sucks. And it's going to, it's it, you are, you are so much stronger than so many people because you have to feel it and you're feeling it because you are a creative person and you're, you know, I don't know what your Enneagram sign is, but I like, (laughs) it changes how you feel your feelings. I just think, I I mean, it's like, like I could, I just think everything you just said is like so darkly beautiful. And also I, I don't ever want people to think that you have to hit a low to hit a high, because I think that's just horrible advice. But I also think that you're coming from a place where you're really in touch with who you are and where you want to go. And it sounds like, and that's, what's exciting. 
that's yeah, what's exciting. It sounds like, like whatever you are, what you I like want. have a yeah. vision. Yeah. But that's the positive stuff is like, I do know what I want and where I want to go. And so yeah. mm-hmm. I think that's half the battle sometimes, you know, that, that was another, that was, the, that was the first struggle. Now it's like, okay, I know where I want. So now we have to like get, get, you know, life, life is not perfect. We're going to go mm-hmm. through these ups and downs and like, I guess uh, podcasting, we're going to embrace those emotions today on the show (laughs) unexpectedly. The the thing is too, if you, if you, you are, you are dealing with all of this in the, in the, in the vacuum in which your world is now so that you can handle it better when your world expands. I just, Mm. I really think that Mm. the shit that we've all gone through in the past year and individually in our lifetimes, I've done some, really gone through some stupid shit that I will handle so much better when I am on, uh, in front of a lot of people's eyes because I handled it in the darkest corners of my home. You know what I mean? I just think that you're, you're, you're learning to battle shit now and it's just making you just build up the muscle for later which is important important. yeah and it's also a really good reminder for us and for listeners like take the time to do you like when you are going through something you know if say you're a podcaster and you release your podcast every friday that's what we do if you are going through some shit and you are working by yourself like take some time off it's okay your list your listeners will get it and you don't even have to tell them you don't that's the other thing you don't have to share if you don't want to don't ever feel yeah. like you have to give people a reason for things because honestly you don't sometimes you just need time to your fucking self and people will understand that because because at some point in their lives, they're also going to go through that. You know, we're all humans. Yeah. We all experience those same things. So, yeah, you know, don't get down on yourself if you're having trouble finding a job, if you're having trouble booking stuff, whatever, because you're going mm-hmm. through something, go through it, deal with it, feel it, take that time. Yeah. And then you're, you're, you're putting less uh, in the, in the lockbox to spring open later, right? Like yeah. if you shove as an act, like I used to come home and I would just curl up on my bathroom floor and I would cry. <laughs> my favorite place to cry. So gross. I don't know why that was the place, but I would just, I mean, if I bomb, I remember this, this audition for a CW show and it was a big role and I bombed it so hard, for example. And I came home, I curled up. First of all, I cried in my car the whole way home. And I got into my bathroom and I curled up on the rug and I was like, this is, this is all. And I, I think if I didn't, do that processing, which was not, I wasn't like, I'm going to journal my pretty words. It was like, (laughs) I cried. I was upset all the day. I was like rude to everyone, not likable, but I, that's what I did. And then I, I, I got those, I got those taken care of like, Mm -hmm. and I didn't put it in the box to be like, and later I will be bitter because they won't know my struggles. And like, (laughs) I, I think that's, that's a huge part too, of just becoming like a good person. Yeah. It's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actor, 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 but also like good human. <laughs> yeah. Because it all applies. I mean, think about it. Like we're actors. We're pretending to be real people. <laughs> so if that can all apply to pretending to be real people, it could absolutely apply to being a real person. <laughs> it's a huge part. I, I know I keep harkening back to this workshop, but it's like what I have been thinking about for like a year now that I'm teaching in June is that like big, my final big section is like, and also your real life, mm-hmm. because a there's no such thing as balance. It's never going to be like I have a beautiful social life and I'm also booking. Like it, that's never going to happen. You're probably <laughs> never going to have both of those at the same time. Um, but you need to have both at like different points, and mm-hmm. they will balance each other out. And you'll get to a point where like as soon you know you'll get to hang out with friends for a while, and then you things go well in your career, and then you don't see people for a few months, and like the good people will stick around. But I think having a life outside of this career is so important because exactly what you just said, we are portraying humans in front of a camera (laughs) Mm -hmm. or on a stage. And if you're not a human, you can't be one. And the boringest actors are actors who only do acting. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly because you get so many people that are like, 
any free time you have, you have to be practicing acting. You have to be working on your career. You have to be doing it. No, you cannot function like that because then you're going to hate it. And you're going to resent it. And then mm-hmm. where are you going to Because you still might not get your next big victory for another 10 years. Yeah. And you're going to spend 10 years digging yourself a hole. Sure. Yes. Put in your reps, right? right. Be in a class or see a coach, yeah. like have active training, do something every day that you feel like is artistic or creative. You, you know, when you're slacking on your acting and I used to try so hard to check a box. I'm like, Today I shall film two self tapes and then my acting box will be checked, but I would film the shittiest audition <laughs> just to check a box. And it's like, this would have been more helpful actually, if I would have just like hopped on, we audition and talked to someone for 20 minutes, or if I would have listened to a podcast that like based on my day, I think, yeah. you know, trying to put that like checked box in a certain like realm doesn't always work for people. But that being said, you know, when you're slacking, you know when to come back into it and you can come and go, but, but you don't always need to be like treading the ground until you're like underneath it. It's just, it's impossible. Yeah, it <laughs> is. And I, I recently heard that on a podcast too about balance. Like I never, I think Sam, you just said it so perfectly. Like there, there is no such thing, but there is like, mm-hmm. there's different times for certain things in your life, whether it could be motherhood, you know, it could be all these things because mm-hmm. yeah, how the fuck are you supposed to be a mom, an actress of a, a biz? Like if you're a business owner and acting and yeah. have time for a social life. Yeah. It doesn't happen like that. No, and we have to stop not, putting I, that pressure that that's how balance works. I think that's something to, I didn't understand until totally. just now. Like, I am not super, super fun when I'm being like really in my lane. Like right now I just booked a job. So I'm like thinking of all the things I need to do to get it done. Yeah. I probably won't go out much and yeah. be social. Like even cause we just started being able to go out. Thank you. Vaccinations. Like I, uh, you know, I'm not going to go get drinks with people because I don't love to drink alcohol between things. Like it doesn't make me feel like my best self. So I'll probably like kind of stay at home for a little while. Mm-hmm. Also COVID still exists. So that's probably what I'll be doing. And, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. you know, I won't be, I'm not going to be super social fun butterfly because I'm like, my career scale is a little heavier at the moment, but then when this is done, let's go celebrate, let's go out. And also, you know, I say this to my fiance all the time and like, maybe this is TMI, but I'm like, I cannot be a fantastic actor, a fantastic content creator, podcaster person, and also cook and also clean the house <laughs> and also have sex with you. Yeah. You have to outsource at least one of those things. So you think about which one you want to do. I can't do them all and do them well. I love that. I love that. Facts. Facts, girl. <laughs> so it's anyone important. listening that's our friend in real life, pay attention. <laughs> This is why we can't hang out with you sometimes. This is, we love you guys, but sometimes, and that's what, to get back to where, like I had this emotional moment is just like, Mm -hmm. I'm realizing it's a time where I need to really stay in my lane. Like I have things Mm -hmm. that I'm processing within myself, but also the stuff I know where I need to go and I I need to bring back that energy. And then I'll be fun, Carolina. We'll go out. It'll be great. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But if you were trying to force yourself to be fun right now, it would feel like trash. Oh my God the worst I can't I can't right now but this course I did see your Instagram announcement on it and I just think what you're doing is so smart for actors because there's just so many there's so many courses kind of like this of course Mm -hmm. they exist but I think you're, you're you're uniquely hitting the points of like again this being a real human and and having the job that will fuel you, keep you alive. So do you want to talk about that, pimp that out right now? Because we're Yeah, no shame, that. self-promotion. We're here. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Because I am so proud of this. And I think anyone about to make a move to LA or if you're leaving college and don't know when you're moving or if you're like just considering, I think you need this class. I priced it very low because I, I think it's worth way more, but I want it to be able to be everyone to take it. I com- made a course that I've taught at a couple colleges now, and um, I'm I'm just I'm so excited about it. So we we're covering uh, all the things that I wish someone would have told me I needed before I moved to LA, Love because that. I didn't. I thought all <laughs> I needed to do was know how to act. Like they're, uh, they're going to show up, they're going to see that I'm really cute. Oh wait, she's also really talented. Holy shit! Welcome to Hollywood, bitch. <laughs> That didn't happen. I ate oatmeal for like seven days because I couldn't figure out where to park to go to a job interview. Um, 
<laughs> it, was, it was a dark time. Listeners, um, this is so real. Like, if you don't live in so LA, real. this is so fucking the real. The highways fucking scared me. I couldn't drive. And then <laughs> taking you know, public I transportation, was... girl, I'm from New York. Like, no, that's a different beast you here. You can't do you that. Can't, you can't. I was dropped off. I mean, yeah. we're funny, ironically enough. I, it's actually where a block away from where I lived. But at night, honey, it's a different picture no. we're painting. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you can't. And no one's like, people are like, yeah, like, be ready to drive and stuff and like just come and like start looking for agents and start booking jobs and I was like okay (laughs) and then I got here and I was like what do I do with myself and on the days I wasn't like I finally got a job I did get a a ticket by the way at my first job interview I was like Uh, and it was like $80 and I bawled oh god I bawled uh, like a baby I was like this is like a fifth of my bank account (laughs) right Um, so I so crazy so uh so this course is all of the stuff that you need to actually live a life as a working actor. And I'm going to cover it all. I'm covering finances and side jobs. We are covering pursuing acting, AKA like finding acting classes, making your communities, what websites you need to be on, what websites you don't need to be on, where to actively put your money. Um, mm. We're covering branding and uh, castability, uh, agents and managers, um, uh, I'm going to forget something now. And also like living a life. There's six categories and now I'm just forgetting what one of them is, but, uh, it's all in, it's like a two and a half hour zoom. We're going to have full Q and a afterwards. So I'll be on the calls as long as people need me to answer questions. Um, and the, the goal of the class is not to teach you to book work because I, I can't do that. I'm not, I'm, I'm no one's guru. I'm not going to teach you how to book acting jobs. What I'm going to teach you is, how to survive in big cities as an actor and how to do it without making a bunch of the mistakes that I did. And I already, from the class that I taught previously, I've taught this almost this exact same course. And I already have some of the students coming up to me being like, I feel so much more excited. I'm less scared or I feel way more informed. I can't wait to get out there. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm, I can't wait to meet all of these new people too, because the energy of up and coming actors is so big. Yeah. And uh, I, I just think it's so amazing. So there, it's about half full at this point in time. There's like three more weeks till June at the point of this recording. Okay. It's about half full. It is filling up pretty quickly. I only dropped it a few days ago. Uh, and um, uh, should we give a, a, a discount code to your listeners? Absolutely. Because oh your episode God. will be airing actually. Um, you see, not this Friday, but next Friday. Yeah. So they'll still have plenty of time. Ooh. So also if the classes sell out, I'll open some in July, but only if they sell out. So okay. Perfect. Don't rely on July. It's also more expensive <laughs> in July. Um, so let's do FEM, F-E-M-M-E. Is that, did I spell that yeah, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Let's do FEM, let's do FEM 10 and that's a 10% off. Um, Amazing. Oh my God, thank you so much. That's so generous. Yeah. That yeah. So let's give generous. it to them. Thank I you. I just want people to come and just come and take it, come and check it out. And if, if you don't have the money for now, I'm going to teach it again probably in the winter before the next crop of people come and uh and it'll be new and improved and I'll add more things to sure. it it'll be constantly evolving so it's it's there in case you get stressed and you can also just follow one broke actress on Instagram or podcast or online and I'll always give free content if that's not available to you at this moment in time so amazing and to sign up for the yeah. class do they just also go to your Instagram or I mean that's how we found out about it but mm-hmm. okay yeah so you can click on the link in my Instagram uh or you can go to onebrokeactress.com slash workshops Okay. And, uh, and I'll add your guys's code fem 10, uh, today. So you guys can share that with your listeners. Cause Amazing. I think oh, I'm so if you're listening excited. to these beautiful, inspiring women that you deserve a discount. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Listeners, please take advantage of that because especially if you are someone that is in that position, like you are, you want to come out to LA or you want to start your career. Like mm-hmm. that is such a valuable resource. It is unbelievable. <laughs> they like, they the, didn't teach it in my college. No, like, they don't teach I it in college. To, they don't like, tell you this. And they can't, like, I mean, they can't, right? Because they're not out here actively living it. Like you have to be in this to really mm-hmm. be able to like live it, to understand that you can book five acting jobs in a year and you could still be $20,000 in debt. Mm-hmm. Like it's just- yeah. It's let's talk about the but, realities yeah. and set you up for success instead of feeling scared. Yeah. Uh, Sam, I love that you Michael. have that. That is definitely one I haven't seen <laughs> for the Thank actor, you. especially coming yeah. out there. So it just sounds like this is something 
we all like needed or wish we had. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank start, you. Because my God. Yeah. We've talked on several episodes about how important community is. And Huge. like, yeah, I mean, that's how, like when I first moved out here, I had one friend that lived down here and mm-hmm. then my first friends were all in my first acting class and I'm still friends with them. That class doesn't even exist anymore. But like, you know, that was my first community. Like that's so important. So yeah, it's your first it's your first network too. Yeah. I think that that's really yeah. missed. And when people think of networking, they just think of people who are older than them and in higher above positions, but the people, you know, and hang out with now, like you guys are going to make some shit and I want to audition for it. Like, yeah. welcome to our, like, now we have a network, the three of us, Absolutely. like, here we go. Exactly. Some, some call it a friendship, you know, <laughs> uh, I think networking is a bad rap. I think a friendship is better, but <laughs> you know, whatever. I'm going to start calling it a coven. (laughs) (laughs) Also on board for that. (laughs) No, and that's, that's true because it can feel when start trying to network out here, it can feel very disingenuine and like, so finding this group, a class where you're like, we're all here for the same shit. I just want to like, like, let's cut the bullshit of like, what can I get from you and what can we do together? And like, do I like you as a person? Like. Can we yes. get drinks? Can we get coffee or tea? Whatever the fuck you want to drink. And- that's it. <laughs> like, that's it. The By day. the way, that's the section I forgot. That was the sixth section oh, was networking. Okay. okay. Was perfect. I forgot. So thanks for bringing <laughs> me all <laughs> around. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> but yeah, that's so important. And so I I love that you're doing that. We're, we're part of a, we always shout out Noam Curl, his filmmaker group. And that's what it is for us. Like, exactly that like he brings Mm. on professionals that are really open to share their experiences and advice and like the Mm. community that community is so great and welcome to the fem fam community that's what we have here i love it yeah no we will definitely have to stay in touch and and we're so excited for your journey and i'm i think we're gonna do some great shit in the next 10 years (laughs) i just so on board i just know it yeah well thank you so much for coming on today um this was so fun you guys thank you i always i fucking love podcasting this is the best (laughs) and you know what's great is i don't have to edit this episode enjoy (laughs) (laughs) thanks for listening to fem regard podcast if you like what you hear tune in every friday for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and review. You can also join the Fem Fam on Patreon. For more on us, check us out at femregard.com. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 